All right, fellow rejects. As the devs say, a promise is a promise. It's a promise. Here's the deep dive into the skill tree. We figured you might, they said, here, here, promise is a promise. Here's our deep dive blog on the talent trees. We figured you might want to enjoy a studious weekend dissecting each class and getting ready for the launch of patch number 13 and Oxbox on October 4th. Should have done that before I started this video, but whatever. For the veteran, when we first released Darktide, we wanted to provide a solid template background striving to capture the core of the Guardsman experience. Encompassed by the veteran sharpshooter, a, so a soldier with a rifle, simple and approachable. Equipped with a frag grenade, it allowed for a ranged, focused play style that could circumvent challenges by simply headshotting efficiently. We wanted to expand the build space into more support roles using the leadership and officers of the Asker Militarum as inspiration. There were early prototypes of a squad leader subclass based on the original release format lying around, so scavenging some abilities and the odd crack grenade inflammation was a solid start. We also wanted to allow veterans to lean into the more aggressive, close to me melee range assault and infantry power fantasies. On what started to be known as the commando side of things, ambushing and the smoke grenades were added to allow players to get stuck in and disrupt the en ranged enemy domination. Initial designs for the veteran talent tree included weapon-specific keystones with the plasma rifle, the bolter, and power sword as the first set. The idea was to create specific bonuses for different playstyles while introducing mutual exclusivity between them. After multiple iterations and some closed testing feedback, we ended up removing the weapon-specific keystones. Why the hell is that fucking word so hard? In the end, any weapon-specific node ends up either offsetting the entire balance of the particular weapon or becoming a mandatory talent tax. Neither were impressively interesting. And probably went over like a wet bucket of water, like a bucket of water on a cat. Um, let's see. We've ended up with a veteran talent tree that provides a suitably rigid layout with three clear lanes. We have tuned the tree to allow for flexibility where zigzagging across the different lanes is not just an option but encouraged. There are clear tinkering spaces where talent options and stat nodes enable builds ranging from pure range damage output, suppression of meter and resilience, melee loadouts with stamina configurations and plenty of others in between. The staple features of ammo management and extra grenades are still present and are integrated into parts of the tree. Creating a well-rounded or very specific build for your veteran is up to you, with clear and straightforward build options. Available and lots of tinkering hidden in the talent clusters and bridges between the lanes. Combat abilities. The Executioner's Stance. Enter a ranged stance for 5 seconds. When in range stance, you instantly equip your ranged weapon and deal 25% range damage, plus 25% range weak spot damage, and your spread and recoil are greatly reduced. Elite enemies and specialist enemies are highlighted for 5 seconds. Base cooldown 25 seconds. This is an augmented version of Volley Fire. Voice of Command. Replenishes your toughness and staggers all enemies within 9 meters. Base cooldown 45 seconds. Infiltrate. Replenish all toughness and enter stealth for 6 seconds, gaining plus 25% movement speed. Leave, leaving stealth suppressed suppresses nearby enemies. Attacking makes you leave stealth. Base cooldown 60. That could be handy. Blitz abilities. Shredder frag grenade. Throw a frag grenade that explodes after a short delay. After Apply six stacks of bleeds to all enemies hit, causing damage over time. This is an augmented version of the frag grenade. Which will go really good with the uh, Katakan knife. Uh, I have one that's built out with, I was lucky, and I've got both uh, Flesh Terror and uh, Lacerate on it. So no matter what I do, I'm making bleed. Crack Grenades. Throw a grenade that deals devastating damage, sticks to flak armored, carapace armored, and unyielding enemies. Ooh. And the Smoke Grenade. Throw a grenade that creates a lingering smoke cloud for 10 seconds. The cloud blocks line of sight for most enemies and reduces the sight range of enemies inside of it. That might be useful in Malay.
Here's just one of the new talent trees for it. The Zealot. The original class was designed to showcase Malay gameplay and provide a familiar home for our Vermintide veterans. Equipped with a stun grenade and a charge ability, it allowed for an aggressive get stuck in Malay playstyle that could bypass the ranged combat and lock the heretics in glorious Malay combat. The first thing we set out to solve was the realization of the bolstering prayer fantasy. The ability to act as a solemn anchor for the team, the source of faith, the reminder that the Emperor protects, providing players with the opportunity of supporting and buffing the rest of the team. Quite a challenge from a design standpoint. In one fork of the tree, we landed on Zealots having a classic ability and buffed the impact of it to allow for better control, including staggering of monsters. On the other side of the tree, we just went full stabby stabby. I do love Stabby Stabby. It's what I tend to go with sometimes in um, my veteran build. I have one that is uh, the, uh, as of right now, I have one that is got the Catacan knife with both flesh tear and lacerate on it and the pistol. I also have the, I also have the gun bunny psyker build with, uh, like that has nothing to do with the veteran. I also have another build that uses the catacan knife. I cannot remember which weapon I'm using for that one. I think it's one of the laser rifles. We made a stealth and backstabby talent tree that leans into the, these tropes. Fully equipped with throwing knives, you can quick throw while wielding enemy weapons. Any weapon. A stealth ability very reminiscent of the Vermintide Shade. Coherency while not in coherency talents and mutator packages focused on mobility headshotting, and dodge dancing. Playing with a stabbing zealot changes the way a team works its way through the mission. The sudden appearance and disappearance of one or more of the team members becomes a flow that the team has to adjust to. One part acts as the anchor drawing aggro in direct combat while relying on stealth build players to strike from the shadows, making, making that clutch revive or complete the objective utilizing their unique skills. That actually would be useful in a if it works out the way they say, would actually be useful in uh, teammates stuck in a horde, in the middle of a horde getting hammered, and sneak in, and then lift them up. Uh, there are three different keystone sets at the bottom of the tree, all unlocking different core passives that are foundational for a build, but plenty of key talents are found higher up. Until Death, together with Holy Revenant, makes up a pair of talents that enable the Zealot to avoid death should it occur and regain health based on damage output for a duration immediately after. You'll find stat nodes for toughness and wounds, talents that provide damage mitigation based on wound thresholds, and plenty of either close range or melee focused damage buffs within the tree. The tinkering space also features plenty of tweaks to your ability suite and hopefully encourages tinkering for synergies with the complete loadout chosen. Combat abilities, Fury of the Faithful. Dash forward, replenishing 50% toughness and gaining a 20% attack speed for 10 seconds. Your next melee hit gains 25% and is guaranteed critical hit. Base cooldown 30. Chorus of Spiritual Fortitude. Wield the Holy Relic that releases pulses of energy every 0.8 seconds. While channeling, allies on coherency have stun and immunity and invulnerability. Each pulse replenishes 45% toughness to allies in coherency. If the ally is at full toughness, they instead gain a plus 20% max toughness up to a total of 100. 60 seconds, base cooldown. Shroud Field. Enter stealth for 3 seconds. While in stealth, gain plus 20% movement speed, 100% backstab damage, 100% finesse damage, and 100% critical chance. Base cooldown, 30 seconds. Stunstorm Grenade. Throw a grenade that stuns all enemies within its blast radius. This is an augmented version of the current stun grenade with a 50% blast radius. 
Immolation grenade. Throw a grenade that leaves a layer of flaming liquid burning and staggering enemies and barring their path. Most effective against unarmored enemies. Blades of Faith. Throw a consecrated knife to deal high damage to a single enemy. Very effective against most enemies, less effective against carapace armors. Its perks are quick throw, killing elite and special, special enemies in melee replenishes one knife, and ammo boxes replenishes your knives. Your keystones are Blazing Piety. Plus 15% hit chance for 8 seconds when in Fury. Fury is triggered when 25 enemies have died within 25 meters. Martyrdom. Each missing wound grants plus 8 melee damage up to 9 missing wounds. Inexorable Judgment. Moving grants you momentum. Stacks 20 times. When you hit an enemy, spend all momentum gaining plus 1 melee attack speed, plus 1 range attack speed, and plus damage per stack. Last 8 seconds. And here's what the new tree looks like. It doesn't say what each of the skills is, but... Now for one of my favorites. The one I tend to run most besides the um, Ogren anymore. I still love the Veteran, though. Mechanically, the release version of our Psyker leaned on controlling the overcharge mechanic of perils by... Providing dynamic buffs and abilities granting better management. The Brain Burst Blitz encapsulated the design principle of pushing Psyker utility towards the extremes of our design space. The ultimate single target remover of problems disregarding armor, line of sight, and anything else standing in the way of the kill. The design was all about enabling the use of force powers and the interplay with managing your peril meter. A true mastery of the warp, walking a fine balance between suffering its perils and unleashing its powers. Sadly, in a high-intensity horde situation, even the best of us pop our heads. The new Psyker talent tree was envisioned as the most tinker-friendly. The shared resource between weapon and blitzes tie everything together. And since there's plenty of talents that scale and interact with perils, it makes build choices for the Psyker a bit more involved and inter interesting. Enforcing a layout that encourages this and invites in exploration and customization rather than straightforward progression was the initial goal. On the Blitz side, we have the old Brain Burst. Mainly intact with some balance adjustments and fine-tuned improvements. We have added two new ones, one for crowd control and one for those easily mesmerized by the twirly spectacle that is our true flight projectiles. The new Smite Blitz is our crowd control one, a chain lightning that allows the Psyker to stunlock large populations of enemies, holding them in place and pushing them around at will. For the last Blitz, we did implement an ammo loop in the end. Warp-infused homing missiles that will track and pick targets based on what you're looking at, and, have a, and it has a self-regenerating -gener ammo cap built in. There are modifiers that allow you to lessen the limitations that come with the ammo loop, but at its core... They work best as a burst of extra damage. I wonder how that affects the psychic bullets from the uh, Void Strike, the Surge, and the uh, Trauma. I wonder if that has ammo limitations. And how badly it's going to affect the stuns, the uh, Void Strike, because that's pure psych or psychic bullet. Perhaps the biggest news with the biggest impact on the whole game loop is found in the shield ability available in the Psyker Talent Tree. It's a simple concept. Place a fat, flat shield that blocks enemy shots, but lets yours and your allies' shots pass. It can be played purely defensively as part of a push, or more tactically to ensure objective completion. The modifier layer allows heavy customization, too. There are options to deploy multiple shields to have special stagger when trying to pass through, and options to exchange the wall for a dome. Ooh. You know, for those who play now, that's one of the joys of the Ogren. If you have an Ogren with a shield, they can just put their shield down in the doorway, and for the Psyker at least, he can pass flames electricity and everything else through 
the ogren without damaging the ogren or hitting the shield. This is the same thing except the psyker ability. So if you don't have an ogren handy but wish you had an ogren with a shield, this would be handy. I don't know how good it's going to be against the uh, monstrosities or the <sighs> demon hosts because they aren't saying all right yet combat abilities venting shriek unleashes a wave of warp energy that staggers enemies in front of you well it's 50 percent of your peril base cooldown 30 seconds this is an augmented version of psychonetics wrath Telekine shield spawns a psychic shield in front of you for 15 seconds. The shield blocks enemy range attacks while you and allies can still shoot through. Base cooldown 40 seconds. Scryer's gaze. Uh, trigger Scryer's gaze. When entering Scryer's gaze, you you gain plus 10% damage and plus 20% critical chance. For every second in Scryer's Gaze, you gain plus one damage up to maximum of 30%. This effect lingers for 10 seconds after leaving Scryer's Gaze. While in Scryer's Gaze, you build up peril. Build up is temporarily slowed down by enemy kills. At 100% peril, the Scryer's Gaze ends. Base cooldown is 30 seconds. Sounds like that acts like kind of like the. Um, it might act similarly to the veteran's uh, ability, current ability. Brain rupture, blitz abilities. Charge up your psychic power and release it to deal immense damage to a single enemy, effective against flak and carapace armored enemies. This is an augmented version of brain burst, dealing plus fifty percent damage, which means instead of having to brain burst the fucking Muty twice when it should pop one before they seemingly buffed it or nerfed it I should say you could brain pop a Muty with the, with one shot it sounds like you can go back to one shotting them a sail throw swift homing projectiles formed of psychic energy less effective versus uh, carapace armored enemies yeah that figures smite unleash a torrent of bio lightning Charge to deal high damage and high impact to an enemy on release, or channel a continuous streams that deals low damage but high impact over time, spreading between multiple enemies. Ooh. Keystones, the warp siphon. Killing an elite or specialist an enemy gains you a warp charge for 25 seconds, stacking fours. Your next combat ability spends all warp, available warp charges to reduce the cooldown of that combat ability by 7.5% per warp charge. Empowered Psionics. Kills have a 7.5% chance to empower your next blitz. Powered Brain Rupture. 100% peril cost reduction. 50% cast time reduction. Plus 50% damage. Empowered Smite, plus 30 damage, plus 25% faster spread between enemies. Now, if I remember what they said, this means you get... And yours and your faith and your friends! <laughs> Emperor, like, Emperor Palpatine-like lightning abilities without the Surge Staff. Was that disturbing to watch? I hope so. All right, Disrupt Destiny. Every second, enemies within 25 meters have a chance of being marked. Killing a marked enemy replenishes 10% of toughness, grants plus 20% movement speed for 2.5 seconds, and adds a precision bonus for 15 seconds. Each precision bonus grants plus 1% damage, plus 2% critical, and plus 2.5 weak spot. Precision bonus stacks 15 times. And my beloved Ogryn. Ogryns are three things. Brawlers, bodyguards, and bringer of big carking guns. <laughs> uh, 
not overly intelligent, but I always do love having them on my team. I actually have on my YouTube channel, LobelGaming52, uh, which is going to be changing because I am thinking about changing, uh, which is probably going to be changing because I am thinking about changing my name to uh, Bearded Wolf God. Um, anecdotally. But for right now, it's LobelGaming52. There are one or two full big boy runs, full ogre runs. Four ogrens on one run. Oh my, what fun. And Brawler's Bodyguards and Bringers are Big Harkin. The core Ogren experience of the Skull Crusher was that was part of the release was already there. Big, strong, melee powerhouse that relies on heavy attacks and massive health. Ignoring the stuns and staggers the little one suffers with the charge at the problem as the go-to solution for everything. To create a strong bodyguard and protector of friends, the Ogren needed to be able to draw aggro. A taunt ability was nothing new. We have those in the Vermintide game. Making it work in the hybrid combat of Dark Tide is trickier. The taunt is one of those abilities that changes how the team plays. It is good for the Ogren player as it helps control the fight. But it's very good when used with the team putting the Ogren at the core of any squad. We also added the point blank barrage ability which is particularly good for Ogrens that like to lug around big guns. It brings up your ranged weapon and reloads it whenever you use the ability, and it also makes guns shoot faster and reload faster for 10 seconds. It's great fun with the ram rumbler. Sometimes the scene says it's like raining grenades. Most use it with a heavy stubber or ripper gun. It's like you can shoot twice as much. Twice as much. So it is like the veteran's ability. It doesn't highlight the enemies, but it re automatically reloads your guns. Ogrens get some nice end nodes, the three keystone talents at the end of the talent tree. You can only pick one of them, but each has a bunch or more modifiers after. And they're not like the ability or the blitz. You don't have to do anything to use them. They are just always there if you pick them. Getting all the way down to one of the keystone talents is as good as most Ogren builds need one. There are lots of talents on the way there, so... Once you have all the talent points, you can pick a bit from each path and make a good build that way, too. Combat abilities. Indomitable. Charge forward with great force, knocking back enemies and staggering them. Gain plus 25% attack speed. Plus 25% movement speed for 5 seconds. Charge is stopped on collision with monstrosities. Base cooldown 30, 30 seconds. This is an augmented version of the bull rush with an increased charge. Loyal Protector. Taunt enemies within 8 meters, making them attack only you for 15 seconds. Cooldown 45. Point Blank Barrage. Swaps to and reloads your ranged weapon. You have plus 25% rate of fire and plus 70% reload for the next 10 seconds. Woo! That is always tends to be one of the things I always go to is increase re reload speed on any gun carrier or any gun I carry. I like the faster reload. Blitz abilities. Big friendly rock. Instead of a grenade, the big box of pain. You can toss a big rock or a hunk of junk at a single enemy. Reduced effective effectiveness against carapace and armored enemies and unyielding. But for crowds and shit. You pick up a new rock every 60 seconds. can hold up to four rocks at a time. So it's like regenerating grenade skill uh, for the veteran. Bombs away. Throw a box of grenades with great strength and enthusiasm to deal high damage to a single enemy. Hitting an enemy causes the box to break open, releasing half a dozen grenades around the target. This is a slightly augmented version of the big box of hurt. We like the big box of hurt, especially when it's set up to where it explodes. Throw an ogren sized, the only proper kind, frag grenade with a 16 meter blast radius dealing increased damage at the center. Holy fucking hell. I may have to go with that one. I'll probably try all three though. 
Keystone, heavy hitter, plus five damage for seven and a half on heavy attack skill. Stacks five times. Feel no pain. You are blessed with ten stacks of feel no pain. Each stack grants plus two and a half percent toughness replenishment and plus two and a half percent damage reduction. Taking health damage removes one stack. Stacks are restored every six seconds. First limiter override. A 5% chance of triggering Lucky Bullet and not consuming ammo when making ranged attacks. Alright, boys and girls. That is our deep dive into the talent tree that's coming to us next week. Uh... The Zealot, I don't care so much because I don't really play the Zealot, but the other three, yes. I'm definitely going to play with the Psyker's abilities and the Ogren's abilities and to a probably a lesser extent the uh, Soldiers, or the Veterans abilities. Thank you for hanging with me, the one and only Bearded Wolf God.